Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. And thank you for joining us today. We have reached the end of another week of Bible studies. Our topic today is Daniel 10 and spiritual victory. We're going to finish our study of Daniel chapter 10 with a few concluding thoughts and observations on the things that can give us spiritual victory as we look at Daniel's experience and the uh, keys that he exercised in his life. Uh, We want the same, and so we'll be looking at that today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for many things today. We thank you for life. We thank you for um, the blessings that uh, we are so often unaware of or failed to thank you for. Um, And we thank you for your word. We thank you for what that word reveals about your love for each one of us, about your desire for a personal relationship with us. Lord, we want that too. That's why we're spending this time with you in your word. We ask that as we take a one final look at this chapter and some of the uh, keys to successful living as Christians that we find here, that you would impress these truths on our minds and our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I have four uh, keys on my list here. We'll see if we get through all of them. The first one is this, that spiritual victory comes by exercising self-denial. Daniel 10 begins with Daniel mourning for three full weeks. He says in verse 3, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. We see Daniel here exercising self-denial, temperance, yes, but even beyond that, denying himself some of the legitimate, um, you know, things that make life pleasant, even in the, in this case, um, you know, some have observed that the flesh may have been the Passover um, meal that was happening at this time of the year. And so Daniel is really denying himself. And this brings up our first point again, that spiritual victory comes by exercising self-denial. Uh, you think about Christ's temptation in the wilderness, much more severe than what Daniel is going through here. For 40 days, Jesus eats nothing. Uh, He is denying himself, and then comes the great battle, the great uh, temptation, and Christ is successful through this as he relies on God's power, on God's word. Um, In 2 Peter chapter 1, we find a list of um, virtues. Some have called this the uh, ladder of spiritual growth, but included in uh, one of the rungs on this ladder is temperance. Let me just read it here from First, Second uh, Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We want to participate in the, di- the, <laughs> the divine nature, don't we? Um, this incredible promise that God will not just forgive us of sins, Um, but he will actually so change us and transform us from what sin has done uh, so that we can once again be connected with divinity. In fact, we're told uh, in the spirit of prophecy that we will, through what Jesus has done, humanity will be more closely united to God than if we had never sinned. Incredible thought. And what follows in 2 Peter chapter 1 is a list of Um, things, experiences that each one of us individually needs to have in order to experience this amazing promise. So Peter goes on in verse 5, he says, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue is like vigorous action, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Right here in the middle of this list, we find temperance. And, um, you know, this is not to say that this is an exact order and you, you, you can't experience any patience until you have temperance, but they are connected, aren't they? <laughs> um, it's hard to 
exercise that patience and self-control if we're dumping junk into our bodies all the time. I may have told this story. Uh, I know I have. I don't forget how long ago it was, but uh, I met a gentleman during an evangelistic series I was doing several years ago, and he told me his experience. He had been raised as a Christian. He was involved in church. He was a leader in church. He taught Sunday school at his church. This was before he became an Adventist. And um, he had never experienced the spiritual victory that he wanted to have in his life. And finally, one day he became convicted that there were some things that he needed to cut out of his life that he needed to deny himself of. In his case, it was uh, movies and music, uh, some entertainment items like this. Well, he did that. And uh, as he explained it to me, he got this huge smile on his face and he said, it was almost like instantly, once these things were out of my life, all of a sudden I had the the spiritual strength and power that I had always wanted but never experienced in my life. And that's what we see demonstrated also in the life of Daniel, isn't it? He denies himself, and this is not the only uh, reason, but one of the reasons that he is able to experience spiritual victory. A second key to experiencing spiritual victory is brought out in Daniel 10, verse 5. I'm going to back up, actually, to verse 4. Daniel says, In the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittichel, then I lift up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz. So in Daniel 10, verse 5, the prophet says that he lifted up his eyes and saw the man clothed in linen. Now, prior to this, he had been standing by the Tigris River, presumably looking at the water. And as you probably know, water in the Bible in Bible prophecy, can represent people. So if we look at this from kind of a a prophetic or symbolic standpoint, Daniel received and understood the communication from heaven and received strength from heaven only when he had looked away from the water or away from people and looked toward heaven. How many of us are controlled uh, by what other people think? We want to please people. We want to be uh, thought well of. We want to be accepted, uh, and these are not bad things to desire necessarily, but if they hinder us from following or worshiping God or doing something that God has asked us to do or simply understanding God's word more, then that becomes a problem. And we see that, at least in a symbolic way, as Daniel looks up from the water away from people, he is now prepared to receive heaven's message to him to understand it, and to act on it. And the same thing is true for us. Spiritual victory comes when we lift up our eyes. Don't worry so much about what people uh, might say or think, and worry more about what God might say or think. And that's a challenge for many of us. You know, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser, I'll admit that. Um, I, I want to be thought well of, I think we all do, but um, it's something that we need to make a decided decision about, isn't it? I will place God and his opinion above what people might think. Let's go to number three. Spiritual victory comes by humbling ourselves before God. I'm going to be reading uh, a statement here from Ellen White. This is letter 201, written in 18, um, well, I believe it's 1899. By the verses in Daniel, and I'm quoting now, by Daniel 10, verses 12 to 13, we see that heavenly agencies have to contend with hindrances before the purpose of God is fulfilled in its time. The king of Persia was controlled by the highest of all evil angels. He refused, as did Pharaoh, to obey the word of the Lord. Gabriel declared, He withstood me twenty-one days by his representations against the Jews. But Michael came to his help, and then he remained with the kings of Persia, holding the powers in check, giving right counsel against evil counsel. Good and evil angels are taking a part in the planning of God in his earthly kingdom. It is God's purpose to carry forward his work in correct lines in ways that will advance his glory. But Satan is ever trying to counterwork God's purpose. Only by humbling themselves before God can God's servants advance his work. Never are they to depend on their own efforts or on outward display 
for success. End quote. Again, that's letter 201 from 1899. Friends, those last couple of statements really grabbed me. They challenged me. I'll read them again. Only by humbling themselves before God can God's servants advance his work. Never are they to depend on their own efforts or on outward display for success. Again, this can be a challenge. This can be a temptation, can't it? I'll start with the last one first. Never are they to depend on their own efforts or on outward display for success. When, As we, as a church, try to fulfill the mission that God has given to us, which is to share the three angels' messages with the world, to share the everlasting gospel with the world, to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ, or at least to give them that opportunity, it can be tempting to rely on man's methods, man's ways to accomplish this. And um, that ultimately only and always results in confusion and failure. We must rely on God's methods, on his power, on his strength. Again, quoting from this letter, only by humbling themselves before God can God's servants advance his work. Uh, Far too often we rely on our own strength, on our own wisdom, on our own methods, rather than seeking uh, for God's leading and will. And so let us take that as a challenge in our own lives personally, uh, in our families, uh, and as it applies to our church settings, locally and as a world church. Success will only come as we... um, rely on God's power, and as we follow his declared will. Our fourth and final key for spiritual victory based in Daniel 10 is this. Spiritual victory comes through protection from heaven. Reading from that same letter, letter 201 in 1899, we read this. Over every man, good and evil, angels strive. It is the man himself who determines which shall win. I call upon the ministers of Christ to press home upon the understanding of all who come within the reach of their voice, the truth of the ministration of angels. Do not indulge in fanciful speculations. The written word is our only safety. We must pray, as did Daniel, that we may be guarded by heavenly intelligences. As ministering spirits, angels are sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. Pray, my brethren, pray as you have never prayed before. We are not prepared for the Lord's coming. We need to make thorough work for eternity. Friends, a couple things in that passage that really struck me. Uh, The first one was the first sentence. Over every man, good and evil angels strive. It is the man himself who determines which shall win. Uh, Friends, our our ultimate destiny lies within our own choice. It's not that we can save ourselves, but uh, it is our choice whom we will serve, uh, who we will follow, who we will worship, who we will dedicate our lives to, who we will surrender to. This God has left in the in the realm of human choice. And so spiritual victory comes as we realize this. We also must remember and realize that uh, we must be guarded by heavenly intelligences, By heavenly powers, one way God guards us is through his word. In fact, that is stated uh, stated very clearly here. The written word is our only safety. But we also need to pray for God's protection through uh, his, uh, his angels. We know we have guardian angels, and we need to pray for God's protection. We've seen very clearly this week that there is an enemy, that he is seeking to destroy God's people, And honestly, we don't need to read it, do we? We know it all too well uh, from our own lives and those that we care about. So, friends, hopefully uh, good reminders for each one of us about how God has promised to give us his victory in our lives. May you, you experience it personally. May you experience it in your family and in your church. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and please join us again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.